Hi everybody and welcome to part two of our comprehensive review of all of the top 10 piano VSTs available on the market today. We are going to continue with numbers four, five, and six, and be sure to stick around for part three while we finish it off. Thank you so much for joining us. Here we go. So next in the list is the Garretton CFX. This has a lot of fans and there's a good reason why it has a lot of fans. Uh, so this is the Yamaha CFX and they've captured it at the Abbey Road studio uh, in England, the UK. Uh, the piano tones are detailed, uh, the piano tones are rich, gives you lots of options to come up with uh, different recording patterns uh, with all of the different microphones. Um, it sort of reminds me of the addictive keys, but the lushness of the samples is just a little more dense and I just feel like there's a little more information in it than what you get with the addictive keys. Uh, there is a premium on the price, this is now getting into sort of the medium range. Uh, of, of the pricing that you will see out in the piano VST world. Um, but it does have some, some great features and it, although it took me uh, a couple of times to really completely feel familiar with the UX, it is pretty intuitive. So the mic perspective is how you're calling up the three different sample sets. So we know that we've got, uh, and full compact and notation really just refers to, do you want to tax your system uh, to the max with the full sample set, a partial sample set, or a bare bones sample set? Depends on how many plugins you have open, depends on your system. So this does not refer to three different sounds, it's just three different sample, size, uh, sample sizes. So if we're gonna go full, which is really the only way to truly evaluate and listen to this plugin, this is what we're going here. So. These are just sort of odd little, uh, you may use these sometimes or not, but generally we've got either a classic, which is a combination mic set recording they've taken, contemporary or player. And player uh, is the perspective where you've got two microphones that are, are, are basically where your own ears would be. So it's th three very, very different sounds and three completely different types of microphones. And uh, what I really like about it is like Piano Tech and like Addictive Keys, they show you what microphones that they've, uh, they've put here. So if we load up Classic, we can see that we've got the M49, Cam184, um, 406, and the TLM50, and that's on your close miking and your, your room miking, and then you've got uh, master, you know, stereo with stereo with blah, 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 blah. Uh, you've got some other settings in here, uh, which you can go and manipulate. Sustain resonance, sympathetic resonance. They've got that really completely, um, you know, toned down in this particular uh, preset. Um, you've got your um, advanced, which you can go and manipulate as well. Um, but if so, the mic perspective allows you to pull up without any other uh, preset settings. Uh, pull up the sample sets, but if you want to pull up the sample sets with some nicely paired uh, settings, then where you're going to go is actually up here to your presets, and you go full, classic, so classic tells us we're in this classic sample set, and then here are, I don't know, what is that, about a dozen, 10, 10 to 15 presets that aren't just calling up the samples, but also changing all those settings within the piano in the studio. So, solo piano, one. Really beautiful. Solo Piano 2.
This would be great for a solo recording. Now this is really playing up uh, a setting in here that is, is quite interesting and I've brought this up in the solo recording as well. This room release, de room release decay and room release volume and the crossfade. Uh, this is an interesting approach. Not all of the plugins have it. In fact, this might be one of the only ones that has it. Or at least certainly with this level of detail of editing. And what it is is while the note is depressed, you're getting a full, uh, you know, sonic presentation of the ambient sound. But the minute that the key is uh, released, it shuts it down. So it gives this um, sort of uh, co-present sense that you're both in a nice space, but it's also bone dry. So. Interesting effect. Let's listen to a few more. Vintage Evans. So a little less exaggerated than say the jazz-ish setting that we were hearing earlier uh, in Addictive Keys, uh, but still very, very, very nice. So, and I'm just gonna give you uh, a quick sense of the difference between that and say the player perspective. Something you'll see in a few of these plugins is that player perspective microphone placement that we talked about at the beginning of this one. Uh, and Addictive Keys has it, Ravenscroft has it, a few of them have it. Uh, and it, this is really wonderful if you're going to be um, writing, practicing, playing, tracking, um, when you've, where you've got monitors that are facing you just as a piano would be facing you, or even better with headphones, because that's going to give you the correct perspective. Um, that you would expect out of an acoustic piano experience. Um, so besides those three options and these settings here, and then you've got your uh, reverb, your audience and performer stereo image perspective, and then you've got a couple of EQ strips, and then you always have just the option of mixing a close and an ambient. Um, Sometimes less options is better, and they've certainly not deprived us of a wide variety of samples. But instead of allowing us uh, to co-mix all of those samples simultaneously, they do have them broken down into that classic contemporary and player perspective. So, uh, you know, that's just a working style. Some people are going to appreciate that they've segmented them like that. Other people will really want the option of mixing as many or as few of those simultaneously as you want, such as you can with, say, 
uh, the VSL or the Ravenscroft where you can put all or none um, at the same time. It's gonna tax your system more, but it really depends on how you enjoy finding that uh, sound. So, that's the Garretton CFX. Moving on now to Keyscape. And I keep calling it Keyscapes. I know there's been a few times in the video. So Keyscape is quite unique within this whole universe of piano VSTs that we're exploring. Uh, and it's unique because of the huge range of instruments that you get. A lot of these plugins what we're talking about are acoustic piano focused. Not only that, some, in, some, in a lot of cases, it's one piano that they've sampled and they are giving you or simulating um, the effect of having that piano in a studio with the option to uh, change microphones and, and pick that instrument up in a variety of different ways. Keyscape, got it right, Keyscape, uh, does that with a few acoustic pianos. They do it with a C7, they do it with almost kind of like one of those old Heinzmann concert uprights. Uh, and then they've, they've done it with a tack piano. And those are the acoustic pianos. So they've got three there, uh, but then they've got dozens and dozens and dozens of other perfectly preserved vintage uh, electric and in, in some cases acoustic keyboard instruments from all across the genre range, orchestral, uh, pop, indie, whatever, jazz, you name it. Uh, and this is how they've got it organized. Um, uh, now, Keyscape, from a price standpoint, is sort of in the upper mid-range. You are going to have to cough out uh, now getting close to $500, $400 to $500, depending on what market and currency you're buying this in. And there's no option to split it up. It's just an all or nothing thing. But if you can afford it and you can kind of get your, uh, your wallet and your heart into that place, it's sort of nice that they've just forced you to get it all because once you've got it, you just want to play. You just want to have fun. And the nuance and the character that this plugin manages to capture with all of these instruments, and I would say even more notably with the electric pianos and some of the acoustic uh, mallet instruments like the Celeste and the Glockenspiels and things like that, are just remarkable. So I'm, you know, this is a, a kind of a comprehensive review of all of them. We're not going to have time to dive in to this one with superb detail. If you want that, of course, just go to the full review of Keyscape where we do just that. Uh, but here is a quick rundown of a few samples. <laughs> So there's an example of their C7. And lots and lots of ways to tweak uh, the settings down here. Um, a similar uh, level of editability to many of the others. Uh, they all have a slightly different approach on how to lay this out, but it's very straightforward. It's easy to do. They've got, in some cases, a built-in tape, uh, you know, compressor here. 
Uh, these all change depending on the instrument. So you don't always get the same editing function uh, right across the board. It's specialized to each instrument. So I'll give you an example. Uh, so we just heard the C7. Um, gotta hear the upright piano. Because okay. it's just so good. just want to start playing Randy Newman or Dan McLean, Don McLean songs on this like non-stop. So that's their upright. Probably my favorite vintage upright out of the entire galaxy of VSTs. Uh, just saying. Uh, if we take a listen to some of their electric uh, pianos, because this is really where a lot of those, and just take a look at the huge range. So like I said, massive, massive selection of pristinely sampled and captured and it isn't just the instrument they're capturing it in conjunction with whatever the most typical amp settings would also be so you're getting the full package and these are also beefy beefy samples you'll notice that kind of preview window in the top left corner there These are loading off an SSD, so that gives you an idea of the kind of the sample sizes. We're talking two, three gigs for every one of these instruments. Just one other. Uh, let's listen to. So, very unseasonally appropriate, but I guess at some point this video that will be seasonally appropriate. So that's Keyscapes. Uh, I hope you're getting an idea of just the sheer magnitude of the project they they uh, tackled. And I just said Keyscapes again. Keyscape. Um, all of these instruments done with breathtaking accuracy. Uh, and if you were looking for an all in one -er to capture virtually all of your keyboard needs, save say a uh, classic B3, Keyscape would be your pick. They've just killed it. I mean, they just hit it out of the park. Really, really enjoy Keyscape. Ivory, continuing our journey through uh, this universe. 
Ivory is a name that's been around in the piano VST world for a, like a long time, well over 10 years. I think this is going back to 2005, 2006 or something like that when Ivory first came out. Um, and it broke a lot of ground. The Ivory uh, sample sets were the biggest uh, of the time by a mile. And it, I think it was one of the very first plugins where people heard it and go, oh, well, maybe I maybe I can get away with not a, recording a real acoustic piano on a project that is calling for a pretty exposed, detailed acoustic piano. Um, because, uh, you know, before that, there were always telltale signs that you were using software versus a real piano. There was just certain uh, amounts of, uh, of um, harmonics and resonances that just weren't accurately picked up when you just did samples. And so it needed computers fast enough to load it. It needed, um, uh, you know, enough of a home recording industry uh, that it was worth it to come out with these plugins that didn't just service, you know, small numbers of large studios, but large numbers of small studios. So broke a lot of ground. We're now up to Ivory 2 2.5. And this package that we have came with um, really three pianos. They've got this synth thing, but I'm not even going to address the synth thing. Uh, so they've got a Busendorfer Imperial. Uh, they've got a German Steinway D, and then they've got a Yamaha C7. Uh, now the Grand 2, I believe, is uh, just the second um, generation or second uh, capture. This, I think, is the original that they had, and then this is the one uh, that we're going to listen to. Very classic Bizendorfer sound. Very clear. Very uh, brassy, aggressive bass. Let's listen to their capture of the D. Loading up here. Oh, that's nice. can really hear the string resonance. And that was one of the big things that Ivory brought to the market, was this idea that you could sample individual notes, but then synthesize um, the interplay of those notes with a, uh, you know, a, a resonance engine, because that was one of the big drawbacks. You know, you can capture these individual notes, but let's not forget that once notes start playing at the same time, there is a whole interplay that creates a, an additional set of harmonics that your ear hears. And then finally, let's just have a quick listen to the C7.
So definitely a Studio C7, very bright hammers, exaggerated attack. But certainly great for those pop pianos. And that's ivory. We've got, you know, your EQ and quite a detailed EQ, chorus, ambience. So something that was absolutely intended to be used as a nice self-contained uh, unit and still, uh, you know, holds up very, very well, particularly if you're looking for a great Bussendorf or Imperial. I um, I can't speak a lick of German so or Austrian, uh, so I hope I'm kind of saying uh, that right. Bussendorfer, Bussendorfer, uh, and uh, of course the uh, the Steinway. I think both are really beautiful captures uh, of that. So there's Ivory. So that's it for part two of our comprehensive review of all of the top VSTs of the day in the piano world. Stick around for part three. Click on the link below, and we will continue.